Hello and welcome to this podcast and webcast in the History and Context of Journalism series at the University of Winchester. Today we have a second year topic which is Sigmund Freud and a lecture was given earlier today by my colleague Brian Thornton uh, dealing with Freud and we also viewed some art material, some art film from uh, the period really when Freud was uh, um, writing the surrealist films of Louis Boone well. So um, I'm going to uh, ask Brian, by way of starting, um, what it is that's so important about Freud. I mean, why why on our course do we... We deal with them because uh, studying journalism, studying the media, Freud is absolutely uh, essential uh, for an understanding of... Um, magazines, uh, mainstream movies, um, even the, the language that we use is, is Freudian. Um, as his biographer said, we all speak Freud now. Um, whether we agree with what Freud said, what, whether we disagree, it's, he's impossible to ignore, especially in the media. Um, I- everything is soaked in, in sort of Freudian terms. Um, what, I, what I try to... Uh, explained today was the context of Freud, his main ideas, um, his opposition to sort of uh, I, the, the ideas of Plato and the idea of Marx. Um, also, I did introduce quite a few criticisms of Freud because for Freud is an in, intensely controversial figure. So in this course, it's controversial to some. We, we unfold in, you know, in a sort of apostolic succession of thinkers, really starting with the, what's called the Enlightenment normally. Um, what's Freud's role within that? Is he a figure from the Enlightenment? Um, you know, how does he follow on, as it were, from some of the 19th century figures we've been looking at? Who, I mean, Freud, of course, is concerned with the mind, with psychology. So we've looked at some other people like uh, Kant, Hegel, uh, and, and their idea of the mind. Does Freud fit within that? Um, well, Freud did seem so very much as a scientist. So in, in that regard, you could view him as... Um, following on from the Enlightenment, but he, generally he is seen as a, in opposition to the Enlightenment, as a break with the Enlightenment, because the Enlightenment was a view. Um, if we think of somebody like Newton, um, the view was that through rationality, through our brains, we could in some way, even though we are a long way off, understand the universe. We had the capability, we had the potential, through scientific research, through empirical research, to understand everything and to bring it under control. What Freud is saying is, we were mistaken. This was a great mistake. We are not capable, in the way that we are built, in the way that we are, of ever controlling even ourselves. Um, So the universe, that sort of level of control was always beyond us because we are, at heart, in in our very core, in conflict with ourselves. Now in the lecture, you, d- you did deal with um, uh, a, re- uh, a continuation in some ways from, from Plato, some of the Platonic uh, uh, themes to do with personality and mind, and also but the departure from uh, Marx and so on. But can we move on to what Freud was actually saying about the personality um, himself? Um, I think people following the course will, will, will be able to fill in those details. So. Um, Let's let's talk now for a while about how Freud viewed people. I think that w- I'll take your lead that we, we, we really don't want to open up the uh, Plato and Marx again. That that's for another day. But I think that we must just mention that Freud did follow the idea of the tripartite self, the idea that uh, the soul or the self or the personality is split into three distinct parts. Um, the three parts that he uh, outlines are one, the id, Number two, the ego, and number three, the superego. Um, it's interesting that we we almost feel obliged to mention the id first, and this is um, consistent with Freudian ideas. He describes uh, the id in a memorable phrase as the cauldron of seething excitations. Essentially, it's it's all our instincts, our desires, our our needs, um, and for Freud, he saw it as the fusion of um, two of the real drives in us as, a, as people is sex and aggression. And the id was a fusion of these two. And it was constantly, unstoppably um, 
demanding these needs be satisfied. He was looking for satisfaction all the time and it is insatiable. A bit like a baby, it strikes me. That the id is really the, the baby stage that, you know, w when we grow up we lose our milk teeth and so on, but we never quite lose the mentality of being a baby. Uh, and, and that's expressed in the id. Is, is that right? Is that yeah, this is a symbol that people often use. As, it's like a child having a tantrum. It, it, they, they will not listen to reason. They will not be reasoned to. They will not... Um, the rationality is just gone. All they want is satisfaction. I want, I want, I want, I want. It's relentless. The key thing that we must remember with Freud is Freud is saying this is the dominant part of our personality. And what's, what's wrong with that, I mean, in, in clinical terms? I mean, why shouldn't people just be in that sort of wanting condition? Is it because that leads to unhappiness in some way? It depends which way you want to approach it. But in Freudian terms, if we look at it purely in Freudian terms, is that uh, Freud saw these as um, uncontrollable, um, dangerous, negative, detrimental to us, detrimental to society. This is why Freud thinks that we should repress these. And this is why in his, in his treatment of patients, what he tries to do is boost the ego. The ego is our is our sort of rational selves. Okay, so that's the second stage of it, I understand. So we have this kind of inner child, as you'll, you'll see that in tabloid newspapers, we're talking about their inner child and so forth, and comedy comes from being in touch with your inner child, etc. But then as people grow, or they de develop in a, in a healthy way, a fairly healthy way, um, I think that Freud doesn't see anybody as purely healthy. Everybody is in need of his, his, his medicine. We perhaps come to that, his psychoanalysis. But... Um, as we grow, as I understand it, the theory is we, we develop other, the, the second uh, and third parts of the personality. Is that right? The ego uh, develops um, very early on, but the superego, the superego is the third part. Third part, this, uh, this is not with us when we're born. So with the ego first, as I understand it, the ego is, is the sense of the self. Um, I mean, a, a baby doesn't necessarily know who it is. It just has these wants and needs, that, which, it, which, which it gets very frightened by if they're not immediately satisfied. But in, uh, as the ego stage, as, as it's called, kicks in about two or three normally in, in Freudian terms, of ter the terrible twos, as it's called, when the person, the, the, the person, as I understand it, develops a, a, a sense of their self. And, and that comes into conflict with, with the id, is, is that right? Yeah, that's largely the, why, the, why Freud was arguing that the, this is a time of uh, sort of great conflict within the person, why you will have these tantrums, why? Because, because this is the, f the beginning of a lifelong process, a lifelong battle between the ego and the id, because it's the ego's attempt to try and control the id, f in Freudian terms, for good or for ill. In the lecture you mentioned sex, but... Uh, quite a bit but I think also defecation comes into this because prior to in, in the id phase the child just defecates at will and that's why you need nappies and things for them but the ego stage is also about controlling uh, toilet so-called toilet training and then a third element which you know, comes in to make them do the toilet training which is the parents or the social convention that you can't just defecate wherever you ever you like and so forth it, is that, is that right? Was that, was that what you meant by the superior? Yeah, that, that's exactly right. I mean, in, in Freudian terms, what happens is a child will progress through these different stages. Um, but there is a great danger that uh, somebody may become um, stuck in a certain stage, in the anal stage. And then the, it, this has come into, you know, common uh, sort of conversational language. So and so is anal. Oh, they're a control freak. They, they, they fear. Uh, following their natural instincts because they think they'll be punished for it. Yeah. And then there's oral fix fixation. Um, this is from the, from the bottle, from, you know, from the mother's milk and so on. So it's often said that smoking, for example, is a, is a sublimation of being on the nipple and so on. That's a, people don't derive the pleasure from taking horrible fumes in their thing, but it's the, the whole act of sucking. Yeah. I mean, sublimation is worth mentioning, I think, at this stage. Sublimation is... Uh, Freud argues that there are ways to control... Um, control these sort of uh, these needs 